Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. In today's video, I'm going to do a deep dive into an onboarding. So this is how we get our clients onboarded and how we're using it in our firm at OnPoint Accounting. So let's have a look at Client Engager and how we're doing onboarding. Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. Onboarding is a really popular question we get. How do you onboard clients with our Client Engager? What process do you use? How should we do it in our firm? Onboarding is a really personal journey for each firm. Each firm will have their own processes, systems, forms, emails, and because of that, it's really important that each firm can build their own onboarding process within Client Engager. So because of that, what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you how on Point Accounting, my firm, are using the Client Engager experience to onboard our clients. And then you can take that and hopefully take some insights from that to go and be able to implement your current onboarding processes into Client Engager, but also to improve the oversight of it, improve the process, improve the efficiency of it. And I'm also going to touch on how certain new features that are coming out in the coming months are going to help to empower your onboarding even further. So let's jump into Client Engager and have a look at what we're doing currently and I'll show you how I'm setting it all up and how I'm running it going forwards. Okay so here we are in our test account for Client Engager. Basically first thing I did was I went in and I created a service called Onboarding. So here we go we've got our onboarding service this is what I created first and then I thought oh just have a phase for every th every task that we've got to do. So I've only put a few of our examples in here, otherwise I'll be here forever. But basically I'm saying I'm gonna send a welcome email, then I'm gonna send a client intro, to the, an intro email for the client manager, then I'm gonna send off professional clearance, I'm gonna set up a QuickBooks license, I'm gonna send the client that login, then I'm gonna send a DEX license, then I'm gonna send the DEX login. So basically, this was our onboarding procedure. The problem we then found was that my team were trying to be so efficient and get this onboarding done so quickly that actually clients ended up with being bombarded with emails. So we've then gone and changed our system and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how I've changed the system from what you see now to what we're using currently and it makes sure we're spreading out all of our tasks, all of our emails over a period of time so that clients aren't overwhelmed by the experience we're giving them. So first of all, what I did is I went into our onboarding service and I made sure the checklist was turned on and then I went and I just deleted all the phases. Okay, so I've deleted all the phases in here because as I say, my team were just being too efficient. They're completely overwhelmed by our clients, which wasn't the right impression we wanted to give them. Whilst we want to be efficient with our clients, we don't want to overwhelm them. So what I've done now is I've created a series of phases called day one. So what I did is I created these phases called days. Now my theory is this, we want onboarding to be a journey over a period of maybe a week or two weeks, whatever suits your firm. And each day is gonna have a specific list of tasks that we have to achieve on that day. And this way, we're not overwhelming our client with onboarding emails all in one day. So what I did is I saved these dates. And then what I did is I went to my checklists and I went to my onboarding checklist and there wasn't a checklist, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to call this day one. Because if you remember correctly, if you remember correctly, when I did my deep dive into my workflows, I suggested that your headings of your checklist relate to the phases of your services. So day one. What's the most important thing I've got to do when I onboard a new client? Well, it's actually it's completing AML checks because without the AML checks in place and being passed, 
I'm technically not allowed to work with that person. Now we use Zama for our onboarding, so I'm gonna send an onboarding link through Zama. But actually, the first thing I ought to do is send a welcome email to my client, which is gonna explain what's gonna happen over the coming week. And actually, I want to do that before I do the AML job, so we'll do that first. Just excuse all my terrible typings and spelling and formatting. Then I want to create my reoccurring invoice in my bookkeeping software because I want to make sure I'm charging the client for their services they're about to receive. Then I might create the QuickBooks license and I might also create the DEX license. Then I'm going to go on to day two. And I'm going to think, right, what emails do I want my client to receive on day two? Well, the first one is going to be an intro e email to my client manager. And then I'm going to also send my Go Cardless link. I'm going to create day three. And maybe in day three, I'm going to send my QBO email uh, login. And I'm going to send my Dext login. Now, on day one, I might actually send, because it's not going to impact on the client, send professional clearance. If my clients completed their AML checks on day one, then I could carry out AML checks. Complete my AML risk assessment. And this is all just examples of what you can do. Obviously, you can build this checklist to suit yourself. The overriding message in here is if you have phases of the days and then you break down each, the tasks of each day, that way we can prevent overwhelm of our client. Have a day four one. And on day four, we're going to book in a catch up call with a client. I'm going to assess the data provided by the previous accountant. So I'm going to leave it there for this video's example. But basically what I've done is I've broken down what my onboarding procedure is on a daily basis so that I can make sure that A, I'm not spending all my day doing this in one go when actually I can't because I'm waiting on information from people. But B, I'm also not overwhelming my client with information. So I'm going to save that. So that's how I've set it up on my onboarding process within OnPoint Accounting. What I'm going to do now though is I'm going to take you through quickly what that then looks like and how I can do it so efficiently in Client Engager. So let's go back into Client Engager and have another look. Okay, so here we are back in Client Engager. I'm going to go to a client. I'm going to use my old faithful Client Engager. First of all, I need to make sure my services and pricing, what I've done is I've turned on the onboarding task. Now some people charge for onboarding and that's great. You can set that up in your onboarding process, uh, in your pricing structure, that's not a problem. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to turn the settings on for this and make sure it's all set up how I want it. So onboarding, I'm going to say it's a one-off job and I want my job to be done by Friday. I'm going to save that, yes. 
Okay, I'm now ready to come carry out this work. So if I go to my deadlines, I can see my onboarding job is here. Now I've not set any staff responsible for each day's work on the phases in the settings, so that's why this is coming up not completed and we have a blank for initials. But so the first job for me is to go into my checklist and see what my first job is. Send welcome email. So I'm gonna go straight to my compose an email and I would encourage you to have a template set up for welcome email, you would then be able to select that and just send it quickly and easily. That would be as quick and easy as it needs to be. So I can then go into my checklist and say, yes, I've sent that. Send onboarding link to client, to client via Zama. So I'm going to click yes, I'm going to save that, I'm going to click to go straight to the client, I'm going to go to Zama, and all I have to do is press new, and we know this will open up once I log in and it will enable me to send the client request there. I'm not gonna send it for this purpose of this. So then I can go back to their deadlines, go onto this task again, and find out the next job. Create reoccurring invoice. So I'd go into QuickBooks to do that. And I can just edit it to say, yes, I've done that. That why I was in QuickBooks, let's imagine I've created a QBO license, then I've gone into Dex and created that. Send professional clearance. Right, I've got to send the professional clearance. I'll click to go back into my client, go to professional clearance, put the data in, press save, generate that letter, make sure I'm happy with all these sections. I am. I'm going to save and generate. And then I'm going to press send to previous accountant. Quick and easy. Then I can go back to my deadlines. I click on the task again, I'm going to go, right, I've now completed, I've now sent that professional letter of clearance. Right, well, that's it, I'm done for day one. I've not got anything else left to do on day one, so I'm going to save this, and I'm going to complete day one's task. And so that's it. That's as easy as it can be. Now, in the near future, in the next couple of months, we are going to be launching a forms feature, which means you could create an onboarding form for the client to fill out in the client portal which would then allow all that information to go straight into Client Engager. So that's coming by June 2023, hopefully. Between that and the onboarding process that I've just taken you through, as you can see, it can be a very quick, slick, and very streamlined onboarding process. And I always think onboarding a client is so important to get it right, because that's your real first impression. Yes, you've had a nice first impression of a first meeting, where you've worked out how much their fees are going to be, you've sent them the proposal and the letter of engagement, and they've been really impressed with your turnaround time and how slick that all was. But actually, the first impression of working with them, that's the onboarding journey. So it's really important you get that nailed. And that's why we're working so hard to make sure it's a really slick experience for you and your client. So I hope you've found this video useful. I hope you'll be able to take away and implement some ideas yourself. If you've got any ideas that you think everyone in the group should know about, share what your onboarding journey is for your clients in the Facebook group so that we can all learn and better together. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video very soon.